Dan Goodyev here. Haven't talked to you in a while, uh, but I had a question. Well, quick history. Several times, uh, like a lot of people, I've gotten caught in traffic on I-90 near the pass uh, because you guys are doing avalanche work. Sitting there in traffic, you know, you kind of get curious about what you guys are actually doing up there with your avalanche program. Strangely, it's something we never covered on Northwest Backroads. You, you would have thought we, we would have. But, so if it isn't asking too much, uh, just wondering if it would be possible to get me behind the scenes to look at the operation. Um, you know, I don't know if you're able to do that, but, uh, and if you can't, I totally understand. You know, I really am curious about it, and some of my neighbors want to know, because they get caught in the past sometimes, too, and they complain. Seems like it'd be very interesting, anyway. So, let me know. Talk to you later, Steve. Bye. Hey, Grant. Uh, Steve here, returning your call. Uh, short answer to your question is yes. Uh, yeah, I can get that set up for you. So, uh, I'm going to hook you up with a guy named John Stimbaris. And he's one of our top avalanche control guys. He's going to be able to answer any questions you've got. He may be able to show you any parts of the program that you want to see. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to fit this in, but uh, we will be able to get it done. So I'll get back to you with, with dates and times and all that kind of stuff, and hopefully we can get that worked out. All right. Uh, okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey. Hey, Grant, how you doing? You John? Yeah, I'm John. Oh, great, this is awesome. Um, yeah, Steve called you because, uh, you know, I just had all these questions about how you do avalanche control, and uh, I just, it would be great if we could uh, find out and discover the whole, the whole oh, process. Oh, we could do that, you've come to the right place. Well, Why don't good. we go inside and have a look? Awesome. We'll get started. All right, thanks, man. Come on in, we'll take a look at where we make all the big decisions based on the snow and weather. And Oh, yeah. Uh, see, how, see how we do our job. It must change year to year, right? Sometimes big decisions, sometimes... It does, yeah. yeah. Some winters are easier than others, and some are very difficult. Yeah. All right, we'll just come in this way. All right. Oh, here's the office. Oh, so this is Command Central, huh? Yeah, sure. So why don't you have a seat here? Thank you. All right. Oh, nice views. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice location. So uh, what kind of questions do you have, Grant? Well, uh, I got a million questions, but uh, probably the best way to cover it, it would be, what, what is the process of, of avalanche control? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, there's, there's three main parts, and the, the first is, is the science that goes into it. It's forecasting the weather and snow conditions that mm -hmm. could uh, lead to avalanche conditions. Secondly, we go out and detonate explosives to actually trigger, intentionally trigger an avalanche. That's really where the control part comes into play is we're controlling the situation, not the avalanche itself, but keeping people clear of that area when we do, when we do the avalanche control. And then finally, there's the cleanup. And you know, any snow that reaches the road needs to be cleared before we can reopen and yeah. get, get you moving again. And the cleanup is what people are, are, are familiar with. But back to, you, you, you control the situation by actually you know, creating an avalanche, and, and yet there are natural avalanches, but you're out actually making them, and you know, is that, why is that? Well, the you know, we, last thing we want is a natural avalanche hitting the road, mm. particularly burying a car or anything like that. It can be very dangerous for, for the travelers. And then doing, actually doing more frequent avalanche control reduces the like, the, not only the likelihood of a natural avalanche, but it reduces the size of the avalanche. So if something does happen, it, it may just barely reach the road. But also when, when we're doing this intentionally, um, the cleanup time can be sped up quite a bit by having smaller avalanches. Oh, okay. But the, what I'm hearing too is you're really doing this for the good of the public. You're doing this to keep them safe. Yeah, this is definitely about, about highway safety. It makes you wonder in planning roads and stuff like that, why don't they just do, you know, not have highways and stuff going through these, these dangerous areas? Right, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, a lot of what we know about avalanches has changed over the years. And as, as we've learned more, we've started these avalanche control programs. And that has also led to some engineering parts where we can either contain the snowpack or put bridges over avalanche paths or even a, a snow shed or a tunnel. And currently, we're, we're implementing some of those on I-90. So you're actually putting roads in that will avoid these areas? Yeah, we have one of our most active avalanche areas. We're putting two bridges in, and the, and the avalanches will run beneath the highway. And so we won't have to do avalanche control, and you won't have to stop for, uh, for that avalanche control yeah. any longer. Now, you mentioned um, forecasting, uh, you know, looking ahead, that sort of thing. That's a part I hadn't, hadn't thought of at all. What, tell me more about what it is to do avalanche forecasting. Right, that's, that's a big part of our job because it's, it's an ongoing process whenever there's snow on the ground. And really what we're looking at, a lot of people like think of, of snow in, in terms of snowfall, like inches of snow, but we're really looking at the, the weight and the load that's put on the snowpack. 
it, what it comes down to is a question of stress and strength. And uh, so we're always watching that. But, you know, I can show you on the computer some of the uh, models we use to, uh, to determine how much snow is going to fall or how much rain even. Oh, that'd be great. All right. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so here, here's what I was talking about. This model shows us how much precipitation is coming in. Mm -hmm. Again, we want to know the, the load that's being put on the snowpack. Um, in addition to that, we want to take a look at the, the freezing level. Sometimes warmer and colder conditions um, can result in more stable or less stable um, situations. Mm -hmm. And particularly rain on snow is a hard one to predict. Oh, yeah. Well, so this is all theory here, basically. But uh, how, how do you see it, you know, when you have to put it all into action? Well, the next thing we've got to do is look at the snowpack itself mm -hmm. and, and take some samples there. We could go up to the study plot and have a look at that if you want. That'd be great. All let's right, go. let's do that. So, John, how, how long does it actually take to clean up an avalanche site? We should go over and see Rick, the maintenance supervisor, and he can show us some equipment and answer that question. Do we have time before we go up? Oh, yeah, we definitely do. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's go take a look. Yeah, so this is one of the blowers here. Wow. Oh, look, here's Rick. Hey, John. Hey, Rick. Uh, this is Grant. He's had some questions Grant. about uh, you know, our highway programs. We've been talking about avalanche control, and he was wondering how long it takes to clear an avalanche from the road. Well, that uh, varies depending on the size of the avalanche, how much snow's come down on the road. Uh, depends if there's debris in the avalanche. Could be some rocks, trees. We could uh, maybe need a front end loader or an excavator to come in and help. Usually our first uh, line of defense with clearing avalanches are these blowers and they'll blow about 4,000 tons an hour. And uh, depends on the size of, of the avalanche that we have to remove from the road, basically. It could yeah. be, you know, out an hour or many multiple hours or possibly, you know, a day or more, depending on the conditions. Yeah, if it's really hazardous, we don't want the crews out there overnight. Sometimes we have to wait until daylight to, to assess the situation. Well, here's our, our snow study plot. Wow. We, Looks like an old science project of mine. Yeah, there's quite a few different instruments here. I can kind of run you through each one. Yeah, tell me about it. Great. This is where all our instrumentation is, where we're measuring weather, uh, variables as well as the snowpack. You know, starting up there, we're measuring wind speed, uh, precipitation, and it e actually heats and melts this new snow, so we know how much water is in, in that precipitation. Uh, the snow depth, or total snow height, mm -hmm. and we have a, a big stake there and an automated one. We also measure 24 hour snow here. We have an automated one, so we can monitor that online as right. well. And then we have a, a number of tools we use to get dig down into the snow oh. and look at the snow structure itself. Because not only what's coming out of the sky is important, but also what's going on within the snowpack. Yeah. Can we work with that a little bit? Yeah, let's do that right now. Cool. Ah, there it is. So what is the reason for the snow pit? Well, we want to look at the structure of the snowpack, and that helps us to forecast what uh, layers might become unstable and cause avalanches. Oh, okay, so that you, this will help you see when or if or how an avalanche may occur. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Gives us some more information about what's going on within the snow. So we're gonna take a depth measurement, get a, a temperature within the snowpack. Um, I'm gonna also isolate a column here. Mm -hmm. And I do that with a little saw. And then uh, we'll get in there completely isolate this layer, or this column. And then we can do a couple of different tests with this. We can do a compression test, mm -hmm. where we tap on the snow and look for, for an unstable layer. We can take a column of snow out and give it a tap and see where a shear might be. Okay. Um, and just as important as the snow surface, because we're getting new snow today or tonight, we want to know how well it's going to bond to that snow surface, or maybe not bond that And that well. makes a difference whether you're going to get, get right. an avalanche and that's, or not. Yep, and that's a prediction into the future as well. Well, this is great. So just from this, you know, s snow pit, you can uh, get an idea of what's going on in the vastness of the mountains here. Right. We can apply that to many of our avalanche pads. Uh -huh. And, you know, this winter, this work goes on throughout the winter, but then in the spring we have some higher passes that we clear. And we're going to head there tomorrow to Chinook Pass if you want to take a look. Gosh, that would be great. Yeah, That's... we'll see what's going on in the snow and maybe even do some avalanche work. Yeah, all right. Sounds good. Well, John, this is awesome. I mean, this is so beautiful. Um, wow. John, there's an amazing amount of snow here. Gosh, no wonder it takes so long to get rid of it. Is it always like this? 
Yeah, it is. This is one of the snowier places in Washington State. You know, we can see 20 to 30 foot deep snow along the highway. You know, it's a, it's a lot of work for our maintenance employees to get through this. And, um, you know, our job is to keep them safe. And, right. And so sometimes we have to make avalanches. Fortunately, we'll fill the road in when we do that. Oh, right. They have to come back and oh, clear it all over again. They've already cleared it. You yeah. make an avalanche, they got to come back again. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it can be a long process to get this highway open. So what will we do today up here? Well, think? today we're going to go up and see how the guys are doing with the clearing. Take a look at the new snow. We had about eight inches mm -hmm. overnight. And uh, then we'll see if we need to do any avalanche work. Okay. Well, let's head off. So they've set the explosives and they're uh, skiing down. They're going to go up pretty soon? Yep, we've got, a, we've got a few shots right up there in the rocks, area that's loaded, you know, it's prone to avalanches, and uh, we'll see what, what happens today. Awesome. So that we had a slide come down. It wasn't quite warm enough today. You know, the sun, sun's been kind of hiding from us a little bit, staying right. cold. Uh, on a warmer day, we would have got more snow, what we call entrainment. That, that avalanche would have picked up more snow, come down. But big thing here today is it's now that that area is safe for these guys to work. Good. And uh, they can continue doing their job. Excellent. Well, Grant, now that you've seen our operation, what do you think? Well, I got to tell you, I've been surprised. There's so much more to it than I, than I thought. Uh, and at the same time, it's exciting. It's the, the whole adventure of uh, predicting and all the variables that go into, okay, now when do we go and, uh, you know, do the explosives on the hill, which is the control part. And then after that, we got to make sure the, the road crews aren't there when that's out. You know, there's all these things that go into it. And realizing that you guys aren't just doing this, you know, because, well, it's a job. You're doing it to keep the public safe, you know, on the roads. And it's awesome. Right. There's a lot more that goes into it than meets the eye, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that it uh, is up here in one of the most beautiful parts of the whole world is, uh, you know, I love that too. Yeah, definitely can't complain about yeah. our workplace. Right. Mountains are great. Yep. So, hope to see you down hey, the road. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs>